season three, episode two. And what is today all about, Gloria? Today, well, it started out as <laughs> we should do an episode on retinal alternatives. Mm-hmm. It's a very hot subject right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jump in the rabbit hole and realize, wow, you can have a full episode just on Bakukio. So Bakukio it is today. Yeah, um, and it's pretty exciting because there are a lot of Bakukio launches. Yep, yep. Uh, but before we dive into everything, first things first. Who are we? <laughs> we are the best <laughs> confessions, a fun podcast about skincare science over a couple drinks with yep. chemist Gloria and Victoria. All right. And what are we drinking today? Yeah. So today I thought I would woo Gloria with my bartending skills and decided to throw together a concoction of bourbon, uh, elderflower liqueur. If you guys know what that is, it smells lovely. Um, and whatever's in the fridge, which is pineapple juice and LaCroix. Thank God we didn't see kimchi. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I didn't get that crazy. Maybe that's next time. But, um, yeah, Gloria, uh, review. (laughs) It gets the job done. Mm -hmm. I actually think it it turned out pretty, pretty well. Uh, in the mixing process, the middle sip was like, (laughs) but... It, it Laura had together. A, a face where she was trying to hide her disapproval, but it didn't work. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. but quick story about kimchi. Once upon a time yes. in New York City, <laughs> I forgot what they named it, but okay. it was a kimchi and vodka shot I took in no. the club. It, I was, after I, I took the shot and I was like, Poof, no. I'm awake and I'm very sober because that was just... So it's oh, not like a pickleback. It's not. I mean, I think the idea is there. It's kind of like, uh, you know, you got the acidity from the juice. Mm-hmm. You got the spice. Mm-hmm. Vodka is vanilla enough. It seems like it should work. But like somehow, or maybe the ratio was off. But I was like, wow, no. <laughs> that wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, speaking of random shares, um, the intro is a little bit like Dear Diary. I wanted to share today with you guys, um, both Gore and I have uh, partners slash fiancés, mm-hmm. um, and I don't know if you guys, those who are in relationships, have ever had sparks or moments where they're just like, my partner, and you just admire them for a moment, right? <laughs> So I wanted to share this story because I don't know if you guys also feel my fear in a way, but um, my fiancé, Adam. He told me about how he actually is doing a New Year's resolution Mm -hmm. where he has decided he will add no additional sugar to his diet. So he uses honey in his yogurt. He also doesn't know that he's being talked about right now, but (laughs) he uses honey in his yogurt, um, but he just won't add any like desserts. Wow. Wow, that's a... That's a big one. And Gloria, it's, it's very true because Gloria knows that Adam has a huge sweet tooth. And so... Um, when I go on my bubble tea <laughs> runs, I always ask you know, who wants bubble tea. And Adam's always like, yep, yep bubble always tea, sign me game. up. Always mm-hmm. game, always game. Exactly. So um, he told me how he was working at the office and there was a fat box of donuts in front of his desk. And he did not eat a single one. I don't know how that's possible. He's just staring at it. Yeah, in that moment, I was like, you are so strong. (laughs) You are a strong... Stronger than me. (laughs) Yeah, so I just want to share that for anyone that has a New Year's resolution and needs um, some motivation. There you go, because damn, I could not do that. Meanwhile, last night, I witnessed my fiancé, Chris. (laughs) Granted, it wasn't part of his New Year's resolution or anything, Mm. He like, doesn't need one. He sat there. <laughs> he's, he's good. <laughs> from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. and killed a party bag of Doritos. He ate the whole that, Not the whole bag, but probably a good half of whole, it. Mm, actually, I I, I just hear... I can't judge. <laughs> <laughs> For half an hour. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Anyways, fun share. Um, but we're going to move on to some brand updates. Um, starting with a new content series. Yeah, um, we talked about doing this for the year. Next mm-hmm. thing we know, January is winding down. So this <laughs> is we're going to kick this off in February. Yeah. As um, you guys know, this podcast is updated every two weeks. So we figure on the off weeks when we're not updating the podcast, we want to be more consistent with our in, uh, Instagram live sesh. Yeah. I think for a while we were pretty good. We have like these office hours or themes like every week and people seem to really, really like mm-hmm. it. And 
It was really fun to meet some of you um, Instagram live fans like Broke Potato at, uh, at Trade Joe's. Yeah. So we really want to bring it back, but sometimes it's kind of hard to remember to be consistent or have a theme. So this year we have decided that this is where we are going to have most of our um, a more product-focused views. So yeah. for example, the first one will be over the ordinary, going through the line, which ones we will recommend which ones we're kind of iffy about and how we will layer it. And um, ultimately, we're going to uh, do something like a brand-focused thing every week. Like yeah. some, uh, some of these brands like The Ordinary have so many products. And even within one brand, it's kind of hard to suss out the winners from the me, mm-hmm. me, and the choir taste kind of ones. So yeah. that's what we're going to do. So um, keep your eyes peeled for that. We have The Ordinary lined up. I think we're going to do uh, um, a higher-end brand like maybe a Murad. We also plan to do like a head-to-head between um, direct competitor brands like Cetaphil and CeraVe. And let us know what brands you will want to see on the live stage. Yeah, I think um, we realize we get a lot of questions that ask us like, what do we think about Blink mm-hmm. brand? And ultimately, it's just there are good formulas. There are maybe not as ideal formulas. And we realize this is the best way to have that discussion and um, to talk about in terms of uh, Decium, we actually are only going to look at um, really more of the exotic actives that Mm -hmm. you probably are just not really sure about. Um, For example, we're going to look at things like Pycnogenol or Eucorn 34, you know. Um, Another thing is they actually have quite a a few hyaluronics, so we're going to just go through all that and kind of help you navigate and show how we would look at those formulas so and how being fun. Ke- how being chemists have ruined our shopping experience <laughs> hopefully we will not be ruining for you guys but at least provide direction yes. so that's the goal um awesome. before some nice words we have to say uh hopefully by the time this episode comes out we'll have good news about miss reliable mm-hmm. we're very very close to bringing it back and hopefully the bomb will follow follow soon after yes. so um if you've been waiting for those we're really sorry for the way please sign up for the update on the product page uh, we'll be letting you guys know as soon as these are come uh, are back for sure so hang in there uh my god it feels like we've been crying about inventory for an eternity but we are so so close so yeah thanks for the understanding guys and also thank you for uh it it does it gives us some anxiety but also makes us feel good when people are like when is it coming back we really need my mr reliable <laughs> and it's like it just makes us so happy that our formula has become so many people's staples yeah. but it makes us feel kind of bad that it's been out of for this long yeah, we are on it yeah. um all right so let's wrap up with a few nice words um first things first we are sharing a nice review about gold standard title (laughs) (laughs) new holy grail i love how there are several ways to use this i especially love using this as a more frequent exfoliating glow booster in my hydrating serum exactly how we designed it it really helped with rough bumpy texture along my forehead and i will recommend um but only for those who know their skin very well so their skin uh can handle well we buy that's actually could not have said this better about our gold sander um i think so we just wrapped our one of our chemist recommended series Mm -hmm. i think sometimes what i struggle with is um i can sense like when the way people write to us sometimes i can sense that oh they really want to see results but based on their aha use history i'm a little hesitant about recommending the gold standard Mm -hmm. it's not quite for the beginner it's more for tolerant skin or skin that's kind of knows where its limits are with aha But um, it's definitely one of the most powerful formulas. And I think also um, the expectation that comes with using higher level AHAs, Mm -hmm. for example, like mild stinging, you know, like that can be very intimidating Mm -hmm. for some. But those who have used AHAs and at a higher level, they'll know that like they basically know their threshold and what's okay and not okay. So I think that's a really great point. Yeah, everyone's so different. Mm -hmm. I will say like I'm very AHA tolerant. For all your uh, old fans, you will know this, but nothing makes me feel the demon coming out of my skin like a mud mask. Like, <laughs> the ordinary has an orange one that made me cry real tears. <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, the skin cynical one always has that tingle that goes a little too far. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the tingle and the threshold of tingle, for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, and one last review. This is actually about our new formula, Double Play Face and Eye Treatment. Um, 
It uh, basically, she writes, great for experienced retinal users and newbies alike. Um, and sh she says, I love everything the chemist makes, so I was really excited to try this. I've been using tretinoin for years, but I don't really like to use it around my eyes. Yeah, fun fact, don't do that. I've done that and it was not fun. So I'm really happy to have it for that purpose. The texture is perfect for an eye cream, very easy to tap on, and I haven't had any issues with it running or irritating my eyes. Score. <laughs> also, like the packaging, although I wish the lid twisted on or had some sort of lock mechanism to keep it secure, I'm afraid of losing it. I also got one for my partner, who suddenly developed an interest in skincare, despite having annoyingly perfect skin. Oh, we feel that. <laughs> we actually both have that situation, so we feel you. Um, he did not listen to my detailed instructions, immediately way overused it and caused redness and flaking for a few days. But now he's back on track and using SPF 2. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> so now, so new retinal users follow the instructions. This is the real deal. Yay. Yeah, that's pretty much everything that we had in mind for double play. Texture was a really weird window for us because yeah. we're like, needs to feel substantial for your face but then also you know make sure that it's not like too runny um mm -hmm. so there's like a really interesting sweet spot for us and it was one of our i would say more fun challenges with this formula there are a lot of awkward challenges with yeah. this one too yeah so i think she captured it perfectly and yes um understanding how to apply it for your skin and your tolerance all very important so thank you thank you <laughs> all right now it's time to go through some news yep in the news. in the news so we don't do this a lot but uh we have to talk about the brand sleep and glow mm -hmm. they sent us their pillows to review thank and you. that was very kind yeah it's for two skeptics one. yes <laughs> um the the brand kind of position is an anti-aging pillows and that which made us go all right if you want our honest opinion by all means send it over um top level overview i've been using it for some time um it's a nice pillow if you have like a if you're looking for a low but supported pillow yes. that's something that i um i've struggled with for some time um because a lot of foam pillows are i don't know who they're made for it's like people with like a really curved neck or something mm -hmm. but the pillows tend to be too tall for me mm -hmm. and i've tried anything from foam traditional pillow alternative feather da, 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 the works right and the flat ones sometimes like they're low but not supportive so this one does a pretty good job where it's a pretty dense foam but it's pretty low it does come with a support foam so if you want to boost the level you add a little add half an inch to it uh for me i have to highlight that it is a small pillow you know, it's pricey, um, but it's smaller than your standard queen size pillow. Uh, in fact, Victoria had comments like, it kind of is swimming in my pillowcase. So yeah, I would say that, yeah, yeah that's probably my biggest issue is for someone who tends to move around in their sleep, um, aka wrestle bears in their sleep like me. Uh, I have woken up multiple times not on the pillow. So that would probably be my like only feedback. Yeah. That. And um, the real winner of the gift pack from Sleep and Glow for me was actually the eye mask. Um, we travel a lot. I'm someone that can't sleep with any sort of light. So I always fly with my eye mask. Mm -hmm. It was like a super cheap one I got on Amazon. Sleep and Glow's uh, sleeping mask, when I got it, my first thought was that it's a lot cushionier. Mm -hmm. It's a lot thicker than the mm -hmm. one I got on Amazon. It does a really good job like keeping in place without like really scrunching mm -hmm. your hair. Um, and it keeps all the light out. I think it has like it seals around your eye pretty well without adding too much pressure to your eyes so nice. that was actually my favorite aspect of this experience at the end of the day if you sleep well it's good for you in general yeah i don't know about taking those anti-aging claims too seriously but um anyway that's our take so check them out yeah all right uh next thing is we're already kicking off our celebrity bingo we both missed this one <laughs> yeah and if you guys um haven't done it yet there's still time to join us um all you have to do is go on to virtual bingo um if you just google it um you can create your own card and just send it our way um to take part in this but we already have our first celebrity launch Miss Martha Stewart <laughs> has launched a CBD topical line. And I don't really have a lot to say to this. You know, like CBD, I feel like she, in some ways, I almost admired that she took her time with this launch and mm -hmm. didn't jump on the bandwagon so early. Mm -hmm. I didn't look at it in detail, to be honest, because to me, I'm kind of like, we just did an update on CBD science. 
a lot of things are still tbd yes so seeing another cbd launch i'm like cool yeah cool and also not the steward okay <laughs> well i was just when i read this i was like she has an in because she's pals with Snoop Dogg. And that's, Snoop Dogg knows that sourcing knows where and got the sourcing that sourcing hookup. Yes. So mm, that could be interesting. You never know. Right. But yeah, funny. It's just funny all around. Yep. So, so uh, sorry, guys. Y'all said no more celebrity launches for this year. Martha Here you says, go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. Next thing. So, by the time this episode's out, mm-hmm. um, this will have already happened. Yeah. Dustium is set to increase prices across the board in February. I'm sure all of you guys are aware. <laughs> yep. Uh, at the time of recording, we don't know how much we they're talking about yet, but um, I'm sure you guys feel the pain, too. Mm. And no one wants to hear about it, but the reality is supply chain has been tough on anyone, uh, everyone, and anyone big or small so it's Plus not we we mentioned um how inflation will be impacting raw materials so yeah so some of the most Sorry, common raw down. materials have bumped up like upwards to 40 percent. so it's been a tough time for everyone but um it's kind of to be expected um yeah yeah okay. and you know i i just feel like what a genius marketing campaign if you do this every year not mm. only do you create a rush in sales you get to validate increasing prices so i'm like wow if this happens annually my god it's a terrible but very effective marketing campaign <laughs> yep yep yeah all right and to wrap up the news we are going to talk about two new launches briefly mm. uh one is in theme with today uh winky lux has come up with their bakukio retinol mm. i felt i feel like calling a bakukio retinol is slightly confusing yes but yeah. um they call it bring your skin go- goals to cloud nine with winky lux the clouds retinol alternative cream oil this unique bite cream face oil. is it oil or cream a cream it's oil it's both <laughs> this unique bite face cream oil is powered oh, by Bakukyo, mm-hmm. a plant based retinal alternative that offers all the skin renewing results without irritation. We will talk about that soon. <laughs> Vegan collagen and cockadoo plum. Oh my god, Gloria's favorite cockadoo plum. I don't know why. I feel like that <laughs> and sweet almond oil gets like undeserved level of annoyance for me nails on a chalkboard to gloria so cockadoo plum is a very very popular rich in vitamin c ingredient it's got a great story but i don't know nothing grinds my gears like a rich in vitamin c story because they're never like because then they don't have to substantiate that you actually need to prove that the plant oil works Yep, yep 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 and sweet almond oil that context is because if you look at some of the more premium products you'll always find sweet almond oil and that oil it's okay it's a very basic plant oil exactly but it's relatively straightforward yeah it's just it's just a cheap not the nice it's just a very very basic oil <laughs> to, to see a lot of lux brands uh-huh. will use it and say we use sweet almond oil <laughs> <laughs> okay i do have a question though uh-huh I really like Winky Looks in that it added to the drugstore makeup mm-hmm, mm-hmm. aisle, and I thought I really like their packaging. I think some of their stuff is really fun. Mm-hmm. I actually did not know they had a skincare brand, so I was curious if this is their, like, what their skincare offering is like. No, I'll be honest, I, I, I don't know the history mm-hmm. of Winky Looks. The reason I called out this launch is to, to exactly that, showcase that even at the drugstore level, you can, you're can you starting to see these, like, active ingredient names yeah. called out and it, i think it's Even great for winky looks yeah 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 that's a really really long ingredient list and um well excuse me this um uh, this <laughs> <clears throat> it's a pretty long ingredient list all in all we think we'll go we're going to the um bakukio product landscape towards the end of the episode mm-hmm. in general this is just to highlight that you know like these this awareness around the good ingredient is great so you can now find these ingredients at different price point Mm. but the execution is wild and we will cover the landscape in a little bit for sure and the next new launch we have to share made me laugh because uh this this is a brand i've never heard of called floor and b um (laughs) the product name it's it's their light (laughs) It's a light moisturizer and they call it, they're calling it H2. Oh yeah. <laughs> and the reason why we have to share this is because I believe we sh- 
multiple times have talked about how we have naming parties because we're chemists and what do we know about naming products so we just want them to be fun and um basically uh mr reliable had a few pretty good names mac creamy uh, was one of them <laughs> and moist sandwich. moist maker, moist maker because, <laughs> yeah friends um but h2o yeah came for this was something we had thought about for aquafix and at the time we were just thinking about the kool-aid gif where he comes out and he's like oh yeah H2O, and we were yeah. wanting aquafix to pop out of the wall <laughs> and say h2o yeah and name that so anyways that was that was a fun yeah and then and then we're like no 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 too cheesy. yeah we, we were gotta like, move that's on that's so dorky <laughs> what do we know <laughs> so you know what florin be good on you you yeah. own that h2o you oh, yeah <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and do not have us as our sp- your spokesperson or do <laughs> I will burst through a wall for you <laughs> <laughs> alright anyways that's a little bit of the news yep and it's a chunky meat again today so let's dr- dive right in we're gonna have one ingredient Bakugyo. Which is pretty rare for us, actually. I think this is the first time. Yeah. Um, yeah. The first chunk, we will go through the science of Bakugyo. Yeah. And then we'll take a mini break. And then we'll go through the product landscape. Yeah. So let's go. All right. So where is Bakugyo from, Gloria? <sighs> Bakugyo <laughs> uh, is very well known. I'm sure you guys have all heard the claims. It's called plant retinol. It's actually derived from a plant that's been used in traditional Chinese medicine and traditional mm. Indian medicine called the bok chi plant. Uh, <clears throat> Ser- Sorolia corlifolia. Easy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Breathe it out. <laughs> I'm not botanist, nor did I take Latin in school, so there you go. Um, what I really love about the science of Baku Kiel is it really mm. highlights sometimes like Drug discovery and just ingredient discovering skincare can be such a weird winded road because mm. this molecule was first isolated and identified all the way back in the 60s. And it wasn't mm. until all the way in the 2000s and 2010s that people started looking at it topically. Yeah. And I, I think that it kind of captures the issues of, you know, plant extracts. It's like you basically need a really strong push to get any of these to get any data behind some of these like touted historical ingredients um so yeah i thought that that's a really good point all right um and yeah so it looks like you know it's been it's actually been looked at for a while um they've done some in vitro studies on its antimicrobial properties um they've even looked at mouse studies for anti and as an anti-inflammatory um, but really, it didn't really catch wind until 2014. Um, and that was when they were able to show that somehow this extract seemed to have a similar expression in comparison to retinol. And that's how you hear about it touted as a plant-based retinol. Yeah, so it just it, this molecule has just been through the gamut, right? Yeah. As Victoria mentioned, and, and this is part of the reason why when we, uh, if you go back to our plant extract video, yeah, it was really tough for us because a lot of it was still in that in vitro stage where, yeah. and many still are yeah. despite the marketing claims. Yeah, so you'll hear about oh blah 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 is antimicrobial, mm. blah 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 is anti-inflammatory. Yeah, they all are in vitro, right? It doesn't, a lot of things don't progress in that stage. Yeah. Um, so yeah, after they realized that, oh, um, at least in vitro, it looks like it triggers the same stuff as retinol. All of a sudden there's hype and there is a justification to push it to the next level. So we start, uh, we start seeing clinical data coming out. Yeah, so probably the most notable study that we heard about is done by actually one of the main manufacturers of Bakukio and cosmetics by Sithion. This is that double-blind placebo-controlled study that you've heard where they compare retinol to Bakukio. Super attractive because finally there is a positive control comparison to Baku Kiel to give us some sort of context on how it com- how it performs in comparison to some of the gold standard. However, we should talk about some of the details of this study so that it gives you a full basis. Um, main thing being its uh, protocol. Yeah. 
So in this this study, you'll see reference on a lot of blog posts, a lot of um, skin science communication. Um, there are 44 people in the study, 20 some other group. They used 0.5% um, Bakugyu against 0.5% retinol, which... Yeah, which sounds like a really exciting head to head because it's ballsy, right? It's like if you do a hyperpigmentation study and bench against hydroquinone. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's why that's this study is another reason why there was so much hype about Baku Kiel. But Baku Kiel is used twice a day in the study, while retinol was only used once a day. Mm. So that's a pretty key difference because a lot of at the end of the day, that's you're using twice as much doubling yeah so (laughs) you know anyway basically after yeah so you have one group that uses it retinol once daily 0.5 percent you have another group that uses bakokil twice daily at 0.5 percent and they did find that both performed well uh, and on par Um, they looked at the wrinkle surface area the reduction of that wrinkle area and pigmentation Um, so yeah overall it's i think yeah, people kind of ran with this in that I don't think they realized that it was used, um, the protocol usage was different. However, we do see that um, Baku Heal does something. Yeah, so we'll show some of the result graphs mm. here. It's interesting to see that when, even when used twice as much as retinol, yeah. Baku Heal performed a little bit worse than retinol in terms of wrinkle reduction powers and pigmentation Mm. reduction powers um but it's kind of the trend is very similar and some par um at the end of the day one of the main things that they uh, that people talk about is they consider a retinal alternative that is more gentle yes um but i do want to highlight from this study that there is less itching less um flaking from baku but there is just as much redness, if not sometimes more, from mm. Baku Kiel. So I, I do think that it's important to call it out for people with sensitive skin or people who are, um, have rosacea mm-hmm. or not have rosacea, just prone to more flushed look. Mm. This is something that you might want to keep in mind. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so with that, the Baku Kiel gates were opened. Now everyone's at Baku Kiel! Next yeah. miracle! Yeah, I'm sure you guys have seen many on the market. Um, but the good thing is, after that, um, people did continue to do research in this field. And um, something that we should mention is that mechanism of an ingredient, how it works for skin, most mechanisms are still not, it's not 100% validated. Mm-hmm. Um and so that's really the case for Bakukyo as well. And you find that they're starting to test in different skin concerns in different arenas as well. Um, so one of the really interesting ones was in acne. Yeah. Yeah, Bakukyo has been looked at acne in multiple studies. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's a promising sign that they find mm-hmm. the data intriguing enough to keep exploring for it. Sure. Um, we found a very, very, very tiny study yeah. of N equals 12 where they u- used um, 0.5% Baku Kiel twice a day and did find improvement in acne lesion PIH. Again, really tiny study. It's almost kind of like a dipping your foot in the uh, in the pond kind of study. Yeah, and we should add that this study is open label, no placebo. But the other noteworthy thing about the study is that um, they actually test it specifically for P- Fitzpatrick skin types three and four, which is darker skin tones where we know that PIH is a, is a lot more stubborn. So it's definitely something that's noteworthy, um, but that's not all. They've done other studies as well. Yeah, so next is a whopping N equals 111 Woo! study. Woo! Big uh, money. <laughs> <laughs> where uh, it's a two month long study one group used just 0.1 percent dappling mm-hmm. the other uses 0.1 percent adapling in addition to a baku kiel and ginkgo extract mannitol complex blend okay it wasn't very clear to me how much baku kiel was used here okay um but the takeaway here is in this study they find that using adapling and the complex together seem to kind of it helps with the efficacy and help reduce the amount of inflammation they, uh, these patients have. Yeah, very cool. And I think that just leads us to the study that we really like, and that's where they compare it to salicylic acid. Yeah, um, what I find really cool about the study is they have four cells. Mm. They have a 1% Baku Kiel. So now we're moving on from the 0.5 range, we're going to 1%. Um, <laughs> yep, uh, a 2% cell acid group, mm. uh, and a 1% and 2% cell acid combo group. Nice. 
um, generally speaking, you can probably kind of gauge that I guess that the combo group outperform each of the groups individually. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's, I don't think the takeaway should be, yes, I must add Bakukyo to my cell asset. Just know that at the end of the day, um, as we mentioned in the acne episode, acne is a complex problem. Yeah. It's not something cell asset alone was ever going to solve. Yeah. You know, and Bakukyo kind of adds to that equation. So it's pretty helpful. Yeah. I think that. I, I actually really liked this study that Gloria found, um, mainly because they actually looked at it from f- for different mechanisms. They looked at it for collagenase. This is all in vitro, though. The collagenase, they looked at it as antimicrobial. They even did lipid peroxidation. And I think that... Um, oh, that's be- a common antioxidant test, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> and, uh, to be fair, this is actually also done by Scythion as a follow-up study to their original one. And I think that it's... It's just honestly good work, whereas we we often see that once you have that initial study, people just tend to run with it without continuing to validate and continuing to research and better understand. So mm-hmm. we I liked that a lot, and I think the paper actually highlights that basically the takeaway at this point is that it does something. Mm-hmm. And what that does at this point still like trying to figure it out, but at least skin concern-wise in terms of testing – Uh, pigmentation wrinkles and maybe even supporting an acne routine all three seem like valid possibilities and we also think it's great because one of the most common questions we get asked is can i use x with y Mm. with these different active combos and a lot of of times we're like okay based on its uh, irritation potential Mm. where it's useful where it's in your team yeah yeah. it has to be kind of a detective work for us and kind of um uh, a long-winded answer for us to guide them through the pitfalls but they tested the combos for us it's so nice it works at it's least beautiful. really it does go well with the that boy it does work <laughs> well with cell acid so there you go oh god Gloria's losing it <laughs> yep so. i and i you know i wanted to also add one more thing is that as a plant extract this is probably one of the better actually probably one of the best 90 five percentile in terms of studied as um despite uh only having like a few years behind it really um in the rush of it and then yeah in terms of understanding so we would say yeah this is actually um it feels like the uh i almost want to say it seems like the interest of it has spurred the continual study so great yeah yep so Anyway, one of the most positive takeaways we have on plant-based ingredients. Yeah. Um, we are going to take a little break now. Oh, yeah. And jump in and decode the claim before we go into shopping for Baku Kiel. What claim are we getting today, Gloria? Oh, Hit right. Me. This is a continuation from our rant about how the percentage, uh, the wheels on the percentage train have oh. fallen off and it's all staying ahead. It's all gas, no brakes in the percentage train. We, we don't rant about that often. You no. Know. So, <clears throat> I think it was last week, last that last episode we ranted sure about was. misleading retinal claims, talking about things <laughs> like 4% retinol, 12% retinol, like why would you ever need, anyway. Just know that for every time that is printed on a box or a sticker, a chemist sheds a tear. <laughs> yes. You might not care, but that's a lot of tears, okay? <laughs> Um, so this week I found something I found kind of interesting. This okay. is from Burst Skincare. Mm. It's a brand that you can most commonly find in Target. Mm. And it's interesting to us that even Target brands or more like mass market brands are uh, are jumping on the percentage train. You know, everyone's targeting more transparency now, mm-hmm. which generally speaking, I think is a good thing. But then <laughs> I see stuff. This is from their um, this is from their Sunday morning antioxidant oil. And then I see that they have um, 0.046% sea buckthorn extract. I wish I made a tiny flag. (laughs) 0.108% chamomile flower extract. I'm like, yo, good good on you about the transparency. (laughs) But even as a chemist, I'm like, what does that tell me? (laughs) You know, so I just think, anyway, and they also give you other info, like 22% camellia oil and 0.05% tocopherol. I just, anyway, I just, yeah, I don't, how do we feel about this? (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I mean, percentages have truly come a long way and I almost 
gone too far. Um, so probably what we need to do is follow up on what ingredient percentages to pay attention to. <laughs> yeah. And anything that really involves um, oils or let's say even this plant extract here that sea buckthorn extract we actually know very well doesn't have all that much data behind it. It's really not that helpful, unfortunately. It's like, I appreciate the gesture, but... <laughs> yeah, and and the thing is that there isn't... For me, what I struggle with is mm -hmm. I kind of... When I first read it, I was like, okay, we should give people guidelines on like percentage range to, to target or mm -hmm. to try to hit. But there isn't a standard answer. It's like not super easy to remember, mm -hmm. especially for extract. Looking at sea buckthorn extract, any planty extract, like... Honestly, I will hope the use level is at least at 1%, mm -hmm. if not much higher than that. Um, so the 0.046, I'm like, I don't know where you're sourcing your extract from that's active at 0.046, but, you know, it's just... Send us the supply. My God. Yeah. Help us make our formulas less expensive. Yeah, and that <laughs> paired up with camellia oil, which is the base, at 22%, that, that tells us as chemists that it's probably a pretty... Um, nourishing oil yeah. um, but that has, still has a clean finish but at the same time like I just have I, I just I don't know what else to say about that <laughs> lastly vitamin E will be a little easier for this to answer there are a lot of different forms of tocopherol uh, we use alpha tocopherol in our better oil at 1% because that's more of the bioactive level it's used here at 0.05% which means it could be there to protect the formula yes, especially because it's an oil mm-hmm but it might not work that well as an antioxidant. So anyway, there's a lot of nuances to it that I just feel like as a consumer seeing these numbers, I just, I, I it feel, it feels like they're throwing out smoke bombs. <laughs> at the, it's also, I don't know. Kind of, we really, you know, before when we started, it was always about like helping the consumer decipher. And now this is also like, now we have to almost help the consumer decipher like what are what are the things we need to pay attention to and like percentages like this is like don't even worry about that at that point yeah, yeah so for real like, we gotta level up i i just see this as us the chemist confession's job is not over we gotta level up <laughs> yep yep oh, okay um and one more product from verse is oh, their re their retinol <laughs> I, was I was reading this one i'm like oh my god i don't want to talk about this one Sorry, it'll be quick. I'll try to make it quick. And they have a firm ground retinal body lotion. Mm -hmm. Um, actually, as I'm reading this, I realize we should do a live session on Burst because they have mm -hmm. a lot of products. Some I think are decent. Some yeah. I'm like, eh. anyway. So this one is a body lotion mm -hmm. that has I. They said, and I quote, a retinal blend that is encapsulated retinal and um soybean uh, and soybean oil at 0.1 percent. So I'm guessing they're talking about raw material of retinol dispersed and or encapsulated in soybean oil at 0.1%. Um, so first things first, usually those encapsulations, if you're talking about they're using this blend at 0.1%, the retinol concentration is probably usually in the order of 10% of that, um, plus or minus 5, depending on the source. So we are talking about 0.0x% retinol here, which as a body product, it's not a pitchfork worthy kind of concentration because as a body product, you should be using lower than face. It's a much larger um, area you're applying it to. So no, you shouldn't be targeting the 0.5 and 1% to begin with. But at the same time, I feel like calling out the complex as a whole like that can be misleading. So it's kind of tough. It's actually even confusing for us because we kind of have to infer whether or not they're, and this is the issue with encapsulated now, is that um, you have to decipher is it actually the percentage of active mm -hmm. or actually the percentage of the raw, raw material. material. And yeah. that, oh God, that's like decode that IL level 100. Like you might as well just be a chemist at that point so that's why it's like oh no this is starting to get even more complicated yeah so for for our retinol uh our double play we have 0.3 percent retinol the raw material form of it it's in there at something like four percent because it's encapsulation you need mm -hmm. yeah but anyway it just feels like the backstory backstory of that is hard to convey and it's confusing if you're like it's four percent you know yeah anyway yeah so yeah, and of course they have 0.01% to call for which is... <laughs> <laughs> cool. Ooh, 
I kind of have a little tiny flag. We Ooh. really should get a tiny flag. Yay. <laughs> yeah. So that is the decode that claim corner. The the percentage train is uh, off the rails and yeah. it's charging ahead. So, <laughs> well, y'all are just gonna level up with us on these decodes. So we got you. We'll we'll keep going through these for you guys. Um, but yeah. That's it for decode.io, or sorry, decode.claim. Yep. On to Bakukio part two. All right. I feel like this is like the overarching thing today, which is shopping is a wild experience in skincare. Yeah. And sometimes, I don't know if you feel that way, but sometimes I feel like, oh, like there are days I'm like, okay, okay, I think we're helping people understand more about ingredient science. Mm-hmm. And then there are days I'm like, I think we're confusing people more. I think the market has become more confusing. Yeah, and I think for us, it's even confusing for us to figure out how to go about the landscape, Mm -hmm. too. Um, And I think COVID really changed all that up. Um, In some ways, great, you know, like um, where people are looking past big box retail, but then the interwebs is a vast, vast universe. So, yeah. yeah. Again, more work for the chemists to do. We will not stop until yep. this stuff makes sense. <laughs> yep. When we were putting together the meat of this episode, I, um, I, oh my God, Facebook will not stop selling me Bakukio products now, but <laughs> I just try to find everything that's out mm-hmm. there and kind of gauge how to break down the landscape. Yeah. And I walked away and Victoria can vouch for this. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> It's that wild. Exact reaction. <laughs> wild. Uh, <clears throat> so, first things first, this is a really stupid point to harp on, but Bakukion's raw material is not purple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they, well, I, I know why. The flower of the Bakukion, the Babji plant, is purple. So, I think brands as a whole have decided that, yes, purple shall represent Bakukio. So now you see a bunch of purple crap out there that's Bakukio. And I'm kind of like, it's cute. I don't mind the color at all. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't know why I feel the need to say this in my mind, but it's not purple, just FYI. Bakukio drove the Pantone color of the year. Woohoo! Yeah, Bakukio <laughs> as a raw material is kind of a brown green ish liquid. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So anyway, um, before you go shopping for Bakukio, who it's for? Um, most likely people who have trouble reigning in retinol. Mm-hmm. We do always tell people that, you know, it's for the beginner. It's also for people that just have bad experience for, uh, with retinol, but still would like to maybe try that, like get dabble in that like retinol like efficacy. For sure. Um, because it has a lot of great data with acne. So let's say you're on prescription tretinoin or you're on other mm-hmm. acne um, meds and or even BPO dappling and you feel like, oh man, my skin is kind of kind of dry or it's like at that irritation threshold it's been tested to go like kind of support those acne mm-hmm. ingredients so that can be um, good for acne sensitive skin as well who it's not for if you love your tretinoin if you have a retinol product you like if you like right now chug along move on don't even look at this this is this doesn't replace that exactly yeah i think that when it first came out we we got bombarded with questions that were like, should I be switching to Bakukil? And yeah, definitely not. If you are used to the retinoids, and mm-hmm. um, definitely there's no reason. Um, and like we shared in the study, you know, um, you have to, the protocol involved using it twice a day versus using retinol once a day to get on par results. So um, yeah, there you go. And I think. The other thing I wanted to follow about the acne prone skin too is um, just remember the the results are still pretty new. Um, It definitely can be considered as supplementary. Um, Mm -hmm. I also really like that they're looking at it for PIH Mm -hmm. um, because it's such a huge concern for acne and something I care about a lot. Um, But just remember to manage expectations. Um, A lot of these skin concerns are looking at it's like throw everything at the wall and see what sticks so it's definitely like an opportunity to try but again we're also still waiting for even more testing to come out yeah yeah don't treat it like your singular solution please what victoria don't. is saying don't. and also pih stands for post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation mm-hmm. i think sometimes we don't we kind of just talk through with every right. i think we've gotten a few messages that's like What's an AOX? I was oh, like, I felt oh, so bad. That's someone, our fault. Someone who was reading our book asked us what we meant by the SC. And mm-hmm. I realized that um, we talked about it in the beginning, but if you don't read the book front that to back, line. you will not 
understand what we mean by the abbreviation SC means stratum corneum which so. is your outermost layer of skin exactly. the layer that your products interact with exactly so yeah sorry about that our bad yeah we're gonna <clears throat> get that fixed in the second edition <laughs> yes um, so right. product selection mm -hmm. um as we mentioned in the science section you should target at least 0.5 percent that's mm -hmm. the most tested um percentage level at least at least here's where it gets wild I couldn't find a single product that has exactly 0.5%. There are quite a few that's way higher than that, but I was like, what? But it, they, way higher? What do you mean by way? How, how high? So a lot of products are 2%, and I also see a lot of, I saw one that advertises 14%. Anyway, I'm telling you, wild, absolute jungle shame. out there. Shame. Yeah. So, shame. <laughs> I'm like, yo, the cheat sheet is there. They tell <laughs> you. Oh, yeah, they give you the recipe. <laughs> Why don't you follow it? Anyway, um, so that's what oh. you should target. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I wanted to add a story about, um, about our double play here. Hmm. A lot of brands position it as a gentle alternative to retinol, mm -hmm. which, yes, it's you're expecting less side effects than a retinol. One to one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Sorry>. But, <laughs> but don't expect zero irritation. And mm. you, don't, you don't have to, if you're sensitive especially, don't jump into it head first and go for that twice a day use right off the bat. Mm -hmm. um, because it does cause some irritation. It is prone to causing a certain level of redness. So, and when we were formulating double play, we did look at Bakukyo and we thought that maybe we should combine retinol and Bakukyo. And a lot of products on the market do have that combination. Um, so we were looking to boost the efficacy of retinol without increasing the irritation. And we tested quite a few different combos. We tested, um, yeah, we tested retinol Bakukyo at a lot of different ratios and a lot of different con uh, final concentrations to kind of see. And me, being like the resident sensitive to retinal person, could not stand any single combination that has Bakugil. Like somehow it elevated my irritation to retinal by a lot. And I just couldn't. Yeah. And we looked at a range of percentages for yeah. Bakugil too. It's not like we were just trying to push the bar of Bakugil. And honestly, it was very surprising that in combo in retin with our, the retinal we were looking at, um, yeah, it, it was actually, and it wasn't just irritating for Gloria, it was irritating for some that were trying it out. And so, yeah, very surprising. And that's just what happens when you combine actives, it turns into a different creature. And so it is very important to think about, especially considering, yes, um, there are quite a few blends of retinol and Bakukil together. Yeah. That does not equate to uh, not irritating. <laughs> yep. So um, proceed with caution, even though it's positioned as very gentle. Mm -hmm. So, um, then I start browsing products. Gloria ran out of a drink, too, so yeah. this is not going to go well. Go <laughs> racing, <though. laughs> so, the first place I went to was Sephora. And I realized what's interesting is in Sephora, you can find, um, I think, the Inky List mm -hmm. product is at 1% mm -hmm. as a cream. And then almost every other one is basically um, Bakukil in oil form. Like herbivores, like mm. purple oil, I yep. think is pretty iconic. Mm -hmm. But it's just, I just, I don't think it's at an effective level. And so first of all, Bakukil, and we'll have the ingredient list here. Uh, For herbivore. Yeah. And there's a lot of like that purple-ish like um, Bakukil oil that's out there. Um... It doesn't even use bakukyo in its pure form. It uses it uses bapchi extract. No. Yeah. So anyway, bakukyo as an ingredient Boo. is is purified. It's isolated. It's a singular compound that yeah. you can get at a controlled percentage. As bapchi extract, as ah. a consumer, there's no way for you to uh, no no way for you to gauge whether or not it's at the right level. So that's one. <clears throat> So I start looking. Oh, why do they do that? And I start looking at alternative. So Medic Eight has also has a Bob Cookie oil, and they call it the level at one point two five percent, which is pretty high and an effective percentage. You know, you can think of one point two five as maybe that should be a once a day thing too. Mm -hmm. And then I look at the formula too. <laughs> it's a very similar simple formula, and then it the. And Bakuki is the second ingredient at 1.25%. And the first ingredient is Cap Cap Triglyceride. <laughs> so, 
so it's just cap cap triglyceride. <laughs> yeah. So for those of you who don't know, cap cap triglyceride is a basic oil that's in a lot of formulas. Vanilla. Vanilla. We use it in Mr. Liable. It's mm-hmm. one of the oils that we use. Um, it is. It can only be described as vanilla. So to have it at ninety percent, I'm like, kill. <laughs> 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 easy easy yeah. formulation <laughs> cool and then you have the beekman oil i just don't know who didn't trade i don't know why the purple oil is such a thing it's hilarious because it will have these three in a row the beekman also has one anyway they it's like a whole category so for me in general mm-hmm. if you want to try the baku heel oil go for something cheap um, the good molecule has one at one percent. It's also a very simple molecule. Um, surprisingly, at Target you can find a lot of similar basic Baku Kio based oils. They're just not pretty and dyed purple like these higher end ones. Um, there's a brand called Bybi B Y B I uh, Botanics. Um, and good molecules they all have like a one percent ish level in a very simple oil formula. I would say start there. They're not they're not the most elegant formulas. They're not the most elegant delivery systems. But at least you're not spending $70 on a pretty bottle, on a hefty bottle with bobchi extract. <sighs> I so hearing how many of these first of all, who died and made Baku healed of new face oil? I don't know who decided this. Second, was there no chemist to be found and Made an Y'all actual formula. Put in an oil. <laughs> like, what happened? Yeah. That's okay. Uh, yeah, I almost feel like this whole category kind of just took off, and then it's like mm-hmm. there's like a weird unspoken thing where all the brands are like, Baku Kilo should be, should be an, should be a purple oil. That's Baku Kilo. It, sh- it doesn't have to be, trust us. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, I do want to call out a kind of special case. Uh, mm. Biosound squalene plus phytoretinol. That's another one with slightly mysterious mm. percentages. Mm. They have a blend of actives and they did have a clinical study with some pretty good pictures from that. So that might be some a gentle beginning for those of you looking for that insurance policy uh, in addition to percentage level. Question, that one, it says phytoretinol. Is it a blend of retinol and bakukil? No, no, phytoretinol is bakukil. Bakukil, okay. Mm-hmm. Just note that. Also, I think that also for me is the takeaway too, is like calling it like a blank retinol or a retinol, as like plant retinol. Um, I think the naming scheme continues to confuse. So um, I would say that if you're looking for a retinol, be careful of that. And also, if you're looking for Baku Kiel, you might also need to look out for that. So, um, at least in navigating shopping. Yep. So, this concludes our purple oil category. <laughs> okay. And we're moving on into the uh, you don't need 2% category. <laughs> oh, no. So, we have to call out uh, Paula's Choice, who has a 0.3% retinol and 2% mm. Baku Kiel. Um, I think that might have been one of the active combos we looked at, but mm-hmm. that's that's very that's very high. You are if you're talking if you try to like kind of put it to your skill, you are pushing to that like high end of the retinal spectrum in estimated math terms. So don't expect this to be super gentle by yeah. any means. Mm-hmm. Um, so just because it says Baku Kiel doesn't mean that it's right for sensitive skin. I would consider this um, on par with maybe a 0.5% retinol or like an, an up type of product. Yeah. Um, and I think you can maybe consider it as if you want to level up from 0.3%, um, but just maybe haven't found a 0.5% that you really like. Yeah, exactly. Um, we have heard good things, to be honest, um, uh, despite a higher Baku Kiel. So, I mean, it's definitely worth a look. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then you have, there's a brand called Face Theory. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a few things. I think they do a lot of high active dupes mm-hmm. in general. They have a 2% Baku Kiel cream. Um, cool. Uh, I would just add that they call out that they formulate with vitamin C. But the vitamin C, first of all, it's the SAP form of it, mm-hmm. the sodium ascorbyl phosphate form. It's all it's very low, so it's really there to support. If you already have a vitamin C serum in your in your regimen, you want to try this cream. Keep going with the vitamin C. Don't don't like skip it just because you're like, oh, my cream now has vitamin C. It's not at the same level at all. Yeah, good point. And then we see a brand like call it Admire My Face. It's one of those random 
brands you can probably find on Amazon that calls out 15, 15% Baku Kiel. And I look at it and it's actually Bob Chi extract. So I don't even know how much is in it. It's no. just, yeah. Anyway, again, the, the percentage rate is off the rails. It's very confusing. Just skip a product that will try to sell you 15% Baku Kiel. It's misleading and unhelpful. It's like a double whammy, right? Yep. Because it's, yeah, not only misleading, but it's the wrong damn molecule. Yep. I think, to be honest, like anything that doesn't call out the pure compound Bakukiel, just don't even look at it. I hate to say it, but it's already like difficult to shop for and hard to navigate even for us. So I would say just don't even try. Yeah. Especially when we have so many options that uses the active form. For sure. All right. Um, We just want to touch on a few quick questions yes we see sometimes we see baku kiyo position as a pregnancy mm. pregnancy safe um retinol we Ooh, will, but please tell me how, how did you come to this conclusion <laughs> yeah but because basically it's not retinol it's not the molecule mm. is an environment a based ingredient mm. okay so first of all disclaimer we're not doctors so always do double check everything yeah. regarding pregnancy with your doctor but this is a relatively new molecule it's been shown to have similar mechanism similar activation pathways as retinol is it pregnancy safe it wasn't tested specifically for that so to make that leap of faith in a very sensitive time of your uh, of your life we'd say i think that's kind of overstepping what you can claim with this ingredient right now totally agree um another question we get a lot is can i use with other retinoids yeah it's been tested with adapalene a lot of formulas use it with retinol Yes, but just be aware of irritation potential. Yeah, I think I'm most excited about Baku Kiel being a supplement. Yeah. I think that, like, even for people who are used to retinoids, um, they're... To supplement your routine, not like... Exactly. Not- Sorry, yes. To supplement your routine. Um, just because, like, you know, based on the studies that are going on and also... Um, so, you know, to kind of pair with other retinoids, I think this is, like, a cool active. It just isn't well studied enough and hasn't been fine-tuned enough to like figure all that out so that's what i'm most interested on in that right so last but not least where does it go my routine uh it's mostly in a purple oil (laughs) face (laughs) oils goes towards the end it's just wherever you want it to go after your water-based ingredients treat like a face oil cool and <laughs> this concludes the meet. I don't know if it's the most exciting conclusion, but good luck shopping out there. Let us know if we miss yeah. any products. Let us know if you have a favorite Bakugio product you want us to talk about, yeah. to look at. Um, but yeah, all in all, I think at the end of the day, even though we're still waiting for more, um, I think in terms of scientific density and how much study has been done in terms of skincare, it has surpassed like the CBDs. The CBD <laughs> is truly is TBD. Yeah. I was also going to say like, let us know your Baku Kiel experience as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that, you know, it's the, it, there's going to be more launches coming up. Um, we're certain of that. So yeah, definitely keep us posted on your experience and how it works in your routine. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, that's the meat. We are on to break, break, break it up, break, break, break it up, break, break, break it up. Break it up! It's Woo! the Animal Fun Fact Corner. Yay! All right. So I don't know how we're going to top camel beauty pageants, <laughs> but I will try to at least show and tell. Um, I actually got really curious after Gloria's um, whole beauty pageant that I wanted to know what other animal competitions there were. Ooh. Um, it turns out there are also camel wrestling matches. Whoa. Yeah, in Turkey. And oh. um, it's really fascinating because apparently they um, <laughs> they bring out, uh, they have two males, mm-hmm. and then they will bring out a female camel. And uh, they will just basically make them, you know, a little bit excited. And apparently when male camels are excited, they just start salivating and drooling mucus. Like, yeah, it's like very interesting. That's how they like rile them up and try to get them to wrestle. But do not fear. Apparently the wrestling, the wrestling itself on average is not that interesting. What's more interesting, what they do is they end up just like pushing each other. Mm -hmm. And um, one. So it's not as brutal as like a rooster fight. Exactly. So it's like. It's actually not that interesting. The most interesting part is, like, when one runs away, (laughs) apparently it will, like, 
run like it's actually more scary for the audience because they can like run and bulldoze through an audience and so like it's well, more, so they when say, they tap out they tap the ass they out they tap out and they're like out <laughs> they're like gone and um they say it's more entertaining to watch the audience try to run away from the camera <laughs> so anyways i thought that was funny and then the other thing is they actually have leaping rabbit competitions like how far they jump so or how- think of equestrian but for rabbits what? <laughs> what? It's a competition that I apparently started in Sweden, and it's super cute. They have like little um, fences that are similar to like the horse fences. Oh my! And then they like have the run the rabbits on leash, and they like kind of let them on hop over. Yeah, that's so, adorable. That was just a random Google after Gloria's share. Um, but today it's gonna be very vanilla. Um, today it's all about the Chlorurus. Sorditas. Bless you. And uh, it's actually just the daisy or bullethead parrotfish. Mm. Um, so um, just a couple uh, background facts. Um, they can grow up to 16 inches in length. They, you probably know them very well. They're, very, they're just this rainbow colored fish we'll show here. Um, they reside in the tropical waters of the Indo-Pacific. Um, they're actually also known to be prodigious protogenous hermaphrodites Mm -hmm. um which are you know they are born female and then once they get up to a certain size they turn into a male ah yeah so uh if you ever watch uh blue planet yeah you'll probably have seen that before um but today i actually just wanted to share a very uh simple story about their sleep routine um so before they go to sleep they actually end up secreting this mucus and uh it actually comes from their gill cavity and it will, they will create a mucus cocoon that they sleep in. They make their own sleeping bag? <laughs> own they tuck sleeping themselves bag. in and they're stuck? It's That's their all. mucus blanket. Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's kind of fascinating. Um, if you see, there's pictures um, we'll show here of them just like in their little bubble. That's so cute. Yeah. And uh, actually, they the reasons for it are still not quite certain but the main running theory is that it does keep away parasites because Mm. the polymer that it excretes is quite special um it's dense enough where it can keep the parasites out but then it's uh porous enough where a small molecule can still filter through i think you're giving some brands ideas to put that crap in their skin yeah okay so that's exactly why (laughs) i wanted to share basically animals creating their own sleep masks um and then the second thing is also that it might it could help protect them from predators while they sleep just masking them their sense i can just see the commercial now it's uh what's the name uh chlorus sorditas extract <laughs> it's cs 2819 <laughs> as a rescue molecule that protects and cocoons this fish yeah Sunlight, parasite, <laughs> microbiome, skin is rejuvenated. I was just, You're welcome. I am so glad you said this because that's exactly what I was thinking. When I read this, I was like, it's literally skincare for a fish. And I was going to say, so should you ever travel and forget your sleeping mask, you can spit your own mucus cocoon it's to hot. keep your skin barrier protected. <laughs> this is what I've learned from the parrotfish. My commercial uh, impression sounds like an existing one. It's just a coincidence. Oh, I wasn't, yeah, no, I totally wasn't making wasn't fun of anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's the parrotfish. Yay! Yay! Mucus cocoon! Woo! All right. Um, and to wrap up, we're just going to finish with a few questions. Yep. Question number one today. Is fragrance bad? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's complicated. Mm. Um, the reality is it, it, it gets flagged because there's a lot of mystery behind the mm. word fragrance. And it is very mysterious. It is mysterious. Um, and it's a very specialized field. Like me and Victoria in our daily jobs, we're, we're not sitting there looking at fragrance structures because that's not our specialty. It's incredibly specialized. So at the end of the day, um, if you're not sensitized by it, don't worry about it. Keep going. Mm. Um, <clears throat> essential oils is another common form um, of fragrance that people use. 
the reality is any ingredient can be sensitizing mm -hmm. so it's always a good idea to talk to use something that doesn't have that overwhelming level of fragrance um because those makes a poison so if something has a faintly nice smell it's less likely to irritate than your like axe moth yeah. body gel <laughs> you know? yeah and i think we always want to preface with if you are you know you're just looking for skincare and a fragrance is not a known trigger for you then you can continue using fragrance there shouldn't be a fear that right. fragrance is making your skin worse um, however if you are trying to troubleshoot you know skin sensitivities and skin issues then that's a completely different conversation and that's when you want to start looking at things like fragrance and even preservatives there's other categories um but it does it is true it just so happens there is a portion of people that don't do well with the fragrance oils that are used and so again it's case by case it is not a sweeping statement and we love fragrance yep. actually yep um in our personal routine mm -hmm. so yeah so again uh, to sum up fragrance and um and preservatives are usually the top two cul uh, culprits yeah. and you'll be surprised how many people will be like oh my god i think it's hyaluronic acid how the heck do i avoid hyaluronic acid yeah. just to showcase how diverse skin is so yeah. yep that yeah. sums it up yep all right question two is azelaic acid a tyrosinase inhibitor? And this stems from uh, a piece of content we did on Instagram just talking about the tyrosinase pathway. So generally speaking, yes. And I say generally speaking because tyrosinase inhibition test is very complicated. Um, there's a lot of different things you can test on. The mushroom model is probably the most common one. Um, anyway, I won't go into the all details, but there's a lot of different tests you can do, which which ingredient is a better tyrosinase in in inhibitor? Which tyrosinase inhibitor, like basically at what level of inhibition do you say this is cosmetically relevant? Like this will work as a topical ingredient? It's kind of hard to say. Mm -hmm. I will say in some of the method, azelaic acid isn't even a top five conversation in terms of um, tyrosinase inhibition. But at the same time, in clinical studies, it does have... Um, brightening hyperpigmentation fighting efficacy yeah um anyway just the rant was really to highlight the point that this is part of the reason why um hyperpigmentation is a full like it's a bundle deal you need a group of different actors mm -hmm. you want to try to hit as many different angles as possible and that's why it's complicated so yeah yeah and i'm i just want to add that you know it kind of also summarizes our feelings on mechanism mm -hmm. um, mechanism is something that's very difficult to prove um, and difficult to trace. Yes. And um, with tyro uh, with azelaic acid and any ingredient, actually, it's it's definitely hard. Um, and also because uh, you know, at the end of the day, it's like how directly does it interact with tyrosinase as an inhibitor? Um, it can be definitely many phases out. So um, there are some that just are more on the fence about you know, how it works and what, how it benefits and contributes to, um, tackling pigmentation. So anyways, like, uh, I think for us, the general stance is, um, if you are looking and considering azelaic acid for pigmentation, definitely worth it to consider. Um, and just as Gloria said, it's going to take a whole family to fight that extra pigmentation. And so definitely don't expect it to be your only, uh, I guess, active champion here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. One yeah. more thing to add, just to kind of highlight um, how these studies don't usually, there, it's a it's a round path to translating these studies to a final product is, let's say you're comparing um, azelaic acid to mm -hmm. kojic acid. Mm -hmm. They both perform to a certain level in these studies, right? And then you realize kojic acid is very water soluble. You can get a lot of it into your formula. Mm -hmm. Azelaic acid doesn't like anyone. So it's really hard to mash like, a, a, that's why sometimes formulas get a little gritty, they just sit there. Mm -hmm. You don't even know if skin is absorbing those particles. And next thing you know, your kojic acid is turning black on you, it's degrading. So there's a lot of complexities in, um, that's in our like chemist wheelhouse you have to solve. So just to say that, oh, in, this ingredient is a really good tyrosinase inhibitor, that's, what, that's part of what we mean by, okay, yes, but that doesn't mean it's going to be the end all be all. And also in what con context, what format, <laughs> you know, um, 
it gets complicated. <laughs> that was just a little sampling to why it's a little complicated. Yeah, but so, yeah. But anyways, great question. Um, that's actually it for episode two. <laughs> Sorry, I bet this person said, I just want a yes or no. <laughs> <laughs> it's never a yes or no. <laughs> Don't you know this by now? <laughs> Yes, it is. Okay, we're moving on. And this is episode two. <laughs> All right. Yes, it is the end. Um, if you have more questions or want to share some of your skincare experience, please email us at info at chemistconfessions.com or simply DM us at um, our Instagram handle, chemist.confessions. And you can even leave a comment on this YouTube video below. Um, but otherwise, hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, we don't know what topic is next. But you will find out. And uh, otherwise, thanks for listening. Thank you. See you next time. Bye. Bye.